Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of A Cup of Coffee in the Neighborhood with Jennifer Richardson. Good morning. So we've seen a lot of people come in from outside um, outside of the state, um, especially during the summertime, right? Because we are blessed and we live by the beach. So a lot of people come here, they go stay in Airbnbs, they stay in hotels and everything else. And then they just always want to say, OK, cool, maybe I want to think about living here because we're a purple state and our taxes are low and just North Carolina makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you had a question regarding, you know, like what stipulations and like the do's and don'ts kind of of that. Yeah. Yeah. So typically, I mean, people do what I do when I travel, which is like go somewhere and go, oh, my gosh, babe, we should buy somewhere here. This yeah. is great. You know, yeah. let's do this. Um, so, and I think that, you know, really there are a couple of things that, you know, happen on the research side of that. So what are, what are a couple of things that people should start doing in conversations or questions that they should start asking from a lender perspective to get their money right? Mm -hmm. So if they're planning to utilize a loan to purchase a second home. So what are a couple of things that folks can do? Well, it depends on if it's, if we're going to make it. So we have three options, right? So. It's because there's going to be essentially three types of people. There's going to be people who want to come here and make it their primary residence. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some people that are like, okay, cool. I have my primary residence where my work is located, but I want a second home because this is nice. And then there's just going to be the ones that just want to buy an investment property. Um, investment property is probably the easiest one. Um, the only stipulation when it comes to investment property for the most part is obviously there's debt to income ratio stipulations, but it's really about down payment. So it's really about how much money do you have in order to put down because the investment property is going to have a higher down payment than a primary residence or a second home. On the second home factor of things, not a huge issue because you can still be working from your primary residence, um, which is wherever you're located, you know, for instance, New York. Um, and that's where we'll base all of your income off of because that's where you're making your money. That's where you're showing up to work every day. But then as far as a second home goes, it does affect your debt to income ratio a little bit differently okay. than an investment property. Both a second home and an investment property, I have to make sure that your debt to income ratio is under 50. Because mm -hmm. um, essentially there's like two, I'm, I'm just always gonna be talking about the back end. The back end is gonna be the house and all your debt that shows up on your credit report mm -hmm. um, and any sort of recurring payments or whatever else. So we just have to make sure that that number is under 50 for a second home. But for income purposes wise, like if you can apply for a primary residence where you're at, then you could apply for a second home here. Okay. All right, but the real question is, is when they want to make it their primary residence. Mm -hmm. And then we really have to start getting into like, where do you make your money? How do you make your money? And do you work remote? Makes sense. Right. Okay. Um, so the big thing right now is obviously since COVID, everybody's just kind of started working remote, which I hope never goes away because mm -hmm. I mean, hey, it's nice to work remote. And okay. I think that the job, the, I think people like it. Mm -hmm. And um, if you can work remote, no harm, no foul. As long as we have a remote letter from your um, human resources, right, says that, you know, your job is remote, then we can count your income wherever in the United States. Okay. It's when you, you know, you work as, you know, a teacher or something else up in New York, right? And then you're like, oh, I want to move to, you know, North Carolina. Then that's when we're not sort of being like, okay, well, what are you going to do here? How do we ensure that your money is going to stay the same here? So a lot of times what ends up happening is we can do some stuff on an offer letter, but that offer letter needs to be very concise. Okay. So it can't give like a lot of times when they write up the offer letters, it's like, cool, you have the job if you do A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. right? And then for us, it'd be like, cool, then we need proof that you did A, B, C, D, E. Yeah. Um, and if we don't have proof up front that you did A, B, C, D, and E, then we are going to have a problem because now we're like, cool, this offer letter is no longer valid because they put themselves a lot. Of, I call them outs, mm -hmm. but essentially, you know, it's yeah. it is what it is, right? For gives sure. them gives them a, abilities to cancel the contract. Okay. Um, so that's really the main thing is like we have to ensure that you are planning on making the same amount of money here so I can qualify. Okay. So what if kind of switching gears, what if someone is nearing retirement and they're planning to sort of make that you know transition into a different state of residence mm -hmm. i feel like that's something that they need to start talking with a lender with now mm -hmm. potentially because there are some things sometimes i think it makes sense for them to purchase something before they stop working and then or you know if there's a certain age that they're supposed to reach in order to draw social security or whatever that might look like so I mean, they need to have that conversation with you. Right? They, they do. And here's, and here's the deal. The second you tell me that you are, you know, planning on retiring and that retirement's within a year or whatever else, like, 
I can't really do much at that okay. point, right? Like that's like the hard gate um, okay. and that's VA, that's whatever. If you tell me you're retiring, then we have to start basing everything off of your retirement income. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be very much about like, how do we know what your retirement income is? And if we can know what your retirement income is up front, mm -hmm. then we can work off of that. Okay. Um, works really easy for the military because yeah. we can kind of calculate a lot of that. Unfortunately, a lot of times that leaves up like, what's your VA entitlement gonna be? Mm -hmm. And now we have to wait for what the VA says that they're gonna give you in order to qualify you. So what I would recommend is, you know, if you're, if retirement's a couple years down the road and it's part of your path, be like, hey, I need to make sure that I have my primary residence, like do it two years out, um, okay. you know what I mean? Because if you're within that one year time frame, okay. you know, we have to really start looking at how you're going to be making your money after you retire mm -hmm. and how much money you're gonna have because it all goes into the ability to repay. For sure, so it's all about weighing the risk. It is, for the it is, yeah. and it's all about, you know, Getting a loan and everything else, it's it's about trust but verify, and they always want two forms of verification for the most part. So it's like, you know, you think you're gonna get social security, but I want your social security awards letter mm -hmm. so that I can then verify that you're getting the social security. And there's ways to do it. As long as I have all the paperwork up front, like there's ways to do it where you can like look into the future some, mm -hmm. but for the most part, they're gonna want you to be in receipt of those monies. So is it easier for someone to go through this process on the financing side? after they've been retired for a little bit and receive yeah. income, mm -hmm. it's much simpler. Yeah, oh, okay. I mean, second you get your first first check, it makes everything so much easier because now I know that you're getting it, mm -hmm. I know how much you're getting, mm -hmm. and then obviously if you're retired, it's concurrent, so, yeah. um, or at least for the most part it is. Cool. So yeah, and so yeah, it's definitely, um, when you're moving out of state, it really just comes all down to income. Like it just, it has to be stable and you have, and I have to be able to prove that you're going to be making the same kind of income that you are making where you came from here in North Carolina in order to kind of classify you. A lot of times it's a lot easier if you have like working for a corporation that's licensed here as well. Mm -hmm. um, because then we can just do a lot of stuff off of HR letters saying, hey, like this is where he's going to be and so on and so forth. Um, but for the most part, you know, if you're thinking about moving um, and you're thinking about retiring or whatever else, it's definitely best to kind of get ahead of the game as much as you can and definitely want to start all that well, well out from a year Makes of sense. your retirement. All right, cool. I hope that was informative. If y'all got any other questions or y'all just, you know, something pumps in your mind or whatever else, just shoot us a message um, and we'll respond back to you quickly. And other than that, I hope that y'all are having a fantastic week. It's beautiful outside. Go to the beach, enjoy North Carolina, and we will see y'all next week.